In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the method and tell you a little bit about what you will find in chapter one. The method is what we use to help organisations identify why, how and at what point in time research can be used to help design, develop, deliver and evaluate behaviour change interventions. We've been using the method and tools within it for over 10 years and we've applied it to several hundreds of projects. The Behaviour Works method is a toolkit. It's a toolkit of research techniques and approaches that you can use or versions of which you can use to design better behaviour change programs. It has three main parts to it. The Behaviour Works method starts with exploration. And in the exploration phase, we're really interested in unpacking problems, understanding them in great depth before we move forward into trying to change things. Often in the exploration phase, we look at systems. We try and understand what are the different, who are the different actors and how do they interact with each other. We also look at stakeholders and try and understand what the dynamics are between them. And we engage with them. We do evidence review and we conduct our own research from, uh, to try and understand why people are doing the things or why the problem is occurring. The final part of the explore phase is to hone in on the question or to try and answer the question of who needs to do what differently. And a really thorough understanding of the problem through those explore tools can help you answer that question better. We also have a very specific tool to help you identify and prioritise behaviour so that you can take that behaviour through into the next section. The book Chapters at the start cover off on a raft of these explore tools and methods to help you understand your problem and identify key behaviours for you to change. The second part of the Behaviour Works method is what we call the deep dive. Deep dive is where we really have, uh, uh, we focus in on one particular behaviour and we really under want to understand the drivers and barriers of that behaviour. Again, in the book, we give you tools to help understand why people do the things you want them to do or don't. And then on the basis of that understanding, identify tools to change behaviour or interventions that you can take and trial. The third part of the Behaviour Works method is application. That's where we take uh, the interventions that we've chosen from the deep dive phase or at the end of the deep dive phase, and we put it into the real world or in a real context and see if it works. And again, in the book, we'll articulate some tools that will help you do that. There is one other part to the book that's worth noting, which is a shortcut between exploring and application. We call them generic behaviour change tools. So if you're in a real hurry, you can jump straight through into applying things, uh, applying interventions, using some principles of behaviour science that really generally work a little bit on large audiences and can be quite useful uh, in, in your interventions. So the content of chapter one is really starts by saying why behaviour change? Why should you use behaviour change as a tool? And I think there's no better case study to argue for behaviour change as an approach than COVID. We've seen behaviour as being uh, dramatic in its effect in dealing with COVID and indeed making COVID worse, where we see a lack of behaviour change. Those countries that have done well have used behaviour change toolkits and tools really effectively and been able to encourage citizens to stay safe, keep their distances, covering coughs and sneezes and the like, which have proved really effective in bringing the number of cases of COVID-19 down. In thinking about COVID and why behaviour change has been so valuable, I think there are two predominant reasons. The first of all is it's been effective and I've made that point already. The other one is it's been fast. We often uh, can think about behaviour change. If we can get behaviour change quickly, it can help get on top of issues quickly. And we've seen that very much in COVID. While we wait for a vaccine and while we wait for new beds to be built for in intensive care, Behaviour change can help solve this problem or go some way to solving the problem and, and, and while those other solutions come along. So behaviour change can be faster as well as effective. There are other reasons, of course, beyond those uh, from COVID that demonstrate why behaviour change can be useful. In some cases, it can be a lot cheaper. 
And a really great example comes from the, 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 the very, uh, looking at different responses around, say, an issue like drought. We know that in Victoria, in the state where I'm talking to you from, about 10 or 15 years ago, the state was in significant drought. There are two solutions, and there are actually many solutions, but two broad solutions that I'll talk about that uh, show you the difference and justify why behaviour change might be a more useful approach. One solution is to get people to use less water. The other solution might be to make more water, and particularly to do that through the construction of a desalination plant. Now looking only at cost of those two, we see a very dramatic difference. The behaviour change campaign in this state, which led to a dramatic reduction in water consumption, cost the state around $30 million. The desalination plant cost around $8 billion, with more costs still being incurred. The reason why this is a really nice comparison is because the behaviour change campaign saved about the same amount of water as the desalination can create. So it's a fair comparison. In summary, behaviour change can be a cheaper option as well as being faster, as well as being uh, effective. Also this month, we'll be releasing a short essay written by myself and Peter Singer on the ethics of behaviour change. In it, we'll explore two really key questions. The first is, what right do I have to change someone else's behaviour? Who says I am the right actor to be able to influence someone else if I'm given tools to change behaviour? The second question is a, is a much more tricky one, which is about, is it okay to use any tool to change behaviour? And I think that debate has come to life in COVID where we've seen the use of some fairly strict rules to really limit behaviour and whether governments have the authority and legitimacy to, to use those tools to limit our freedoms. So I hope you enjoy reading chapter one and the short essay on ethics. Uh, I hope it's the start of a journey that we'll go on together. You'll get to meet a number of our great behaviour work staff over the next 12 months. And I really hope that you can take some of these tools, apply them in your work to make a better world.